According to basketballreference.com, LeBron's shooting percentage from outside three feet is 37.5%. It's even poorer in the playoffs where he shoots 35.9%. And it gets even worse in close and late situations. In the last two minutes of games where the score is within five points, LeBron hits only 31.7%. <laughs> I think that's going to be the thumbnail already. <laughs>
Yeah. Do two, what it do, man? It's your boy Groovy, man. Welcome back to the channel, bro. What's Let's up? hop straight into it, man. So in my last video, I decided to react to Michael Jordan's ultimate highlights for the first time ever. And y'all went crazy. I'm talking about the OGs ran that video up. I'm talking about y'all schooling me in the comment section, <laughs> talking about all Michael Jordan accolades and how LeBron is not the best player of all time. Now, I'm gonna be honest. I was reading all the comments, bro, and y'all was schooling me bro it was a lot of things that i did not know about michael jordan that i learned about in the comment section down below hey, i did not know we lived it michael jordan was first team all defense nine times mm -hmm. that's tough i ain't gonna lie <laughs> that's tough uh -huh. and while i was watching the highlights bro jordan was actually clamping up bro blocking shots hustling diving for the balls and stuff like that bro and I ain't gonna lie, bro. After watching that video, bro, it looked like Jordan didn't have any flaws in his game, nope. bro. He had the whole bag. His bag was full, bro. The OGs was attacking me in the comment section, bro. Yeah, you could also you could see the generational difference because back then in the '80s and '90s, you were expected to play both ends. It wasn't something special. It was just something special that Michael Jordan did it at that level. You know, but no, it was expected back then. Everybody did it. So this generation, it's only expected you play offense. So it's funny to see he's so surprised that Michael Jordan, who we call the greatest of all time, actually played defense. But for us, it, it, you know, for me, it's funny because I'm like, yeah, duh, what else? You know, but it's so funny to see the age gap. I think he's in his early 20s. Tell about Y'all niggas was mad as hell. Y'all was mad as hell in the comments, bro, about me saying Bron is the GOAT. I saw in the <laughs> comments, man, somebody in this video wanted me to react to this specific video right here. Jordan versus LeBron. Yep. The best GOAT comparison. Yes. So I guess this is the best GOAT debate on YouTube. This video has almost 5 million views. Crazy. I've never seen it before. We'll see if my narrative changed on who's the GOAT, who's the greatest. You know, because right now, obviously... I'm going to pick Brian. That's my error. You know what I'm saying? I didn't grow up watching Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the fair. highlights was OD, though. <laughs> the highlights was OD, bro. Jordan was him. Yep. I ain't going to lie. He really was. So look, before we hop into the video, man, I'm going to need y'all boys to go ahead and hit that like button. Yeah, yeah. Comment any videos y'all want me to react to next, bro. Last but not least, bro. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Done and done, my friend. Let's do this. I wonder. I, I. It's like I. 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 I want to cheat and just go straight to the end, and see. Uh, Let's get it, man. See what Dang, his reaction man. is. Jordan, who the goat? Talk to me in the comments, man. Oh, you know. There's the Chris Mullen. His tongue out. He is him. Mm. Man, Catching I, bodies. Guys, I haven't watched this since uh, the time I reacted to it a long time ago. So mm. it's gonna be fun for me too. Damn. Give me that. <laughs> Chris Mullen again. And leave, leave Chris alone. Remember that Tiago splitter block. Yes, sir. That's, tough. That's how you win a championship right there. You look like Jordan used to kill the Utah Jazz all the time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see, man. Who the GOAT? Jordan versus LeBron. <laughs> LeBron versus Jordan. Yep. It's a debate that has captured the public's attention for the last several years. I don't know why. Especially after this moment in 2016, when LeBron James beat the Golden State Warriors to win the third championship of his career. That's wow. crazy. In LeBron's own words, That one so right there made me the greatest player of all time. Oh, for so many I felt. reasons. I was like, that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. Why? But did it? Wow. Is everything since that moment simply icing on LeBron's game? Hang on a He won three championships <laughs> at that point. Why? Why? Why does that make you better and everybody? I'm oh, sorry. Beating the Warriors team. What was the Warriors? What was their record? 73 and 9. 72 and 9 or some, some, some crazy. 73 and some crazy. They only lost nine games that whole season. And then he came back three. And then he came back three to one. And then he came back down three to one to beat these niggas. That's tough, though, bro. Per Jordan perspective is interesting because why does it matter that they were down three to one? Why is that? Why is that crucial? 
what should matter is if they won or they lost. You know, even if they swept them or if it was in six or whatever the case. But it's like the the mystique and the glory the the it, the glory behind the fact that they came down three to one. Why did why did the goat allow himself to go down three to one? Is the is the question I would like to ask. Jordan fans, come on now, give Bron some credit a little bit. That was tough. Yeah, it was tough because they were stacked. It was LeBron destined. So were the so were the Cavs though. They're two stacked teams going against each other year after year. And to finish his career in Michael Jordan's shadow. We've all heard the arguments from LeBron supporters. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster, For sure. he's more durable. And from Jordan supporters. <laughs> Michael Jordan was merely 6-0 and oh with six MVPs in the finals. But the <laughs> that is tough, isn't too. as simple as the pundits make it seem. <laughs> there are a number of factors six relevant in determining the greatest basketball player of all time. In fact, I would say there are five things that really matter when determining the GOAT of any sport. These criteria are, in no particular order, Accomplishments, okay. Longevity, longevity. Winning, Brian. Jordan. Statistics, Brian. And what we'll refer to in this video as the eye test. Okay. <laughs> and to be the goat, you don't need to be the best in any specific category. This is gonna be fun. But you need to be pretty good across the board. For sure. So simply winning seven championships, like Robert already did, isn't enough to get you into the conversation. I know, and, and I get that in the comments all the time. If it's just about championships, then. Then what about this guy? And it's just like, guys, you're not even using your thought. You have to be the best in the game first. And then you have to get a lot of winning done. It's not one or the other. It's the combination of both that makes you the greatest of all time. It's so silly. Why isn't Robert Ory the GOAT? That's crazy. When seven. we're finished with yeah, this video, seven. it'll be plainly obvious that one guy comes out on top. But before we get started... I want to clarify that this is not a comparison of legacies. It's about who was the better basketball player. If we okay. were talking about legacies, Jordan's is nearly untouchable. Not only did he lead basketball to global popularity, he helped yeah. transform Nike into an empire. I do agree with that. Changed the way players played yep. and how they dressed. Yeah. And he even made it cool for guys to be bald. And while those <laughs> things certainly contribute to MJ's iconic status, they don't make him a better player on the court. I do agree so with let's that evaluate thing. The Jordan definitely has more matter. influence on and the we'll game. And we'll start with yeah, individual too, accomplishments. All right, from here on out, you guys, I'm going to make a, a, a strong effort to not react to the video, but react to Groovy. It's hard. But look. MVPs. Jordan had more regular season MVPs. <laughs> Twice wow. as many Didn't finals MVPs. Didn't know that. Nine huh? more scoring titles. Damn! Yeah. Several more selections to the NBA's all-defensive team. Yes, including sir. Including once being named Defensive Player of the Year. Damn! I did not know that, bro. This nigga had 10 <laughs> scoring titles? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn! He's the best offensive LeBron player of all time. All star appearances, but that's largely due to his having played more seasons. Oh, my God. In fact, when taking into account retirements and he major injuries... Jordan essentially played 13 seasons compared to 17 seasons for LeBron, making wait, wait, Jordan wait. significantly an accomplishment. Jordan played 13 seasons? Uh, kinda. Ain't no way he played only 13 seasons. He played 13 full seasons. Say you swear. Which means all the more impressive. And that's to say nothing of MJ's brilliant college career, which saw him twice named All-American and once awarded College Player of the Year at a time when the country's best players actually went to college. Oh, so wow. regardless of okay. whether you're a LeBron fan or MJ fan, you have to give the accomplishments check mark to Jordan. Yeah, I'm gonna the get at the Jordan. second criteria in our yeah. analysis is Ten scoring titles is crazy. And this one is also a no-brainer. All right, good start, good start, good, good, good concede there because that was the easiest one. Jordan, Jordan's accomplishments far exceed LeBron, and, and, and no doubt, no doubt, groovy. But this time in favor of LeBron. LeBron, yeah. Not Longevity. only has LeBron played more seasons in the league, but he's had a longer peak than Jordan. Definitely. Jordan's peak lasted about 10 years, yep. whereas mm -hmm. LeBron's peak has lasted 16 years yeah. and is still going. Still and going. He's been incredibly durable during that time, missing significant time to injury only in 2019. That said, the claim that LeBron has been much more durable Damn. than Michael yeah. has been a bit overblown. Yeah, I, that, that that's a fun one because... Oh, here I am reacting to the video again. I'll just do it real quick. Longevity-wise, uh, obviously LeBron. Durability-wise, MJ. Consider that Jordan played in at least 80 regular season games 11 times in his career, yep. including all 82 games an incredible nine times. Compare that to LeBron, who played in at least 80 regular season games just twice, 
and in all 82 games, just once. So both LeBron and Jordan get high marks for their durability. But durability aside, the bottom line is that LeBron has sustained his level of excellence yeah. for a much longer period I'm gonna go of time Brian. than Jordan, which puts the longevity yeah, check Brian. mark squarely yeah. in LeBron's corner. LeBron's has been that dude ever since he's been in the league. Yeah, that one's that fair. That brings us to the third GOAT criteria, winning. Oh, shoot. As we all know, Jordan crazy. won six championships. Six. LeBron has won three. Jordan is six Four in now. the NBA Finals. LeBron is three and six. Yes, six LeBron has made stuff. the finals nine times compared to only six times for Jordan. But yeah. let's not pretend that making the finals is the same thing or even close to the same thing is winning. as winning a title. Yeah. Take a prime. Hey, easy. I'm impressed. Most LeBron fans will, will, will debate this to the moon at that point. We'll be like, well, but it's so hard to get there. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's cool. He gets the difference. Silver medal versus gold medal. People get remembered differently, you know, depending on what they win. Uh, and we're going to talk about the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These guys broke my heart as a kid. Example from another sport, the Buffalo Bills. They're the only team in NFL history to appear in four consecutive Super Bowls. Yep. But is there a single player or fan of that team that wouldn't trade all four of those appearances for just one? I'll state? answer it because I was a fan when I was young and I was heartbroken every single year. Would have traded all four of those, those Super Bowl appearances for one Super Bowl win. Without a second thought, losing losing in a championship situation is the most heartbreaking thing ever, as a fan, and it's got to be as a player as well. So celebrating going to the finals and losing for LeBron never made sense to me from any type of sports standing. Damn, I didn't even know that. Yeah, Damn, Frankly, Bills. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt. Groovy. <laughs> yeah. The season's final game. What the hell? And ask them how they felt afterward. <laughs> Like shit. Almost universally, their feelings are nah, six and zero in the finals anger, is, is and disappointment. Super tough, like. and that's just the fans. Damn. For players, those feelings are only magnified. Yeah. Listen to Charles Barkley talk about losing in the NBA Finals. And I was just in shock when it was over because uh, I had to. Uh, I was frustrated because I couldn't wheel my team past Michael and the Bulls. And it. First of all, I probably think I don't think I've ever gotten over it. Number one. Wow. But that was traumatic. And I got to watch some of painful. Chuck, Chuck so Barkley we can all highlights. stop with this false oh, equivalence. Oh, for sure. Chuck, that's tough, though. The Chuck is no joke. Barkley was a great off. player, but he just never won a ring. Yeah, phenomenal. You play to win the game. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So. You play to win the game. Of course. <laughs> now back to Jordan and LeBron. <clears throat> As mentioned, on basketball's biggest stage, the NBA Finals, Jordan was 6-0, and LeBron was 3-6. And, and frankly, that doesn't even show how lopsided their records really are. In terms of individual Finals games, Jordan was 24-11, and LeBron is 18-31. and 24-11 versus 18-31. and 31. Wow. Talk about a mirror, like a, a, a polar opposite. Damn. Those games, Jordan was 24 and 11. Whoa. LeBron is 18 and 31. That's an interesting that's because in stat. four of his six finals losses, LeBron's team hasn't even been competitive. Damn. Twice he got swept, and two other times he lost four games to one. That includes being on the wrong side of the two. God, twice he got swept, and, and then was it twice he lost four to one? Twice swept, twice lost four to one. This is why I love this video, man. It, it, it hits so hard. Damn. Most lopsided finals by margin of loss in NBA history. Of course, LeBron fans will tell you that the only reason for LeBron's poor finals record Katie is that his cooking competition Brian was in the so final, tough. This finals, right? Well, no. So in other words, in four NBA finals, LeBron got cooked. Ironically, some of these same fans criticized Jordan for losing early in his career to a Celtics team stacked with five Hall of Famers. And they conveniently gloss over the fact that LeBron reached the finals. Oh, yeah. I saw that in the comments, too. Somebody said Jordan couldn't beat Larry Bird in the finals or, or somebody. Nope. Somebody said Jordan couldn't beat Larry Bird in the playoffs or something like that. Like somebody gave a crazy stat in the comment section. All right. Uh, I'll answer that for you, Groovy. You were talking about his second and third season. Um, and we're talking prime, prime Larry Bird with possibly arguably the greatest Boston Celtics team of all time 
So this is Michael Jordan before he got Scottie Pippen or any other help. No Phil Jackson. Nothing is set. Jordan just out there going wild, trying to score as many points as he can to win. And he still was competing against Larry Bird and the, and the Celtics. But no, absolutely not. He could not beat them at that point. It was the second and third, third, third season in the league. There's no way he was ever going to beat that team. That was the best team in the league. You know, so that's how that story goes. But LeBron fans, for some reason, use that as a shaming point to, to Jordan. But in reality, there was no one who was thinking he was actually overachieving getting to the playoffs at that point, let alone trying to take down the top dog that early on in his career wasn't going to happen. So he climbed the mountain and it got to the top and stayed there. It was a hard road up. LeBron took the helicopter to the top of the mountain, man. And he can't stay there because he didn't actually, like, build a foundation to get there. But y'all let me know in the comments, is that true? And I got to react to some Larry Bird highlights, too, because I heard he was cold. Oh, for sure. Many times, in part, because the competition in his own conference was so hmm. Yep. Damn, During Terry. the vast majority of his career, LeBron played in what many dubbed the Eastern Conference. Right. Because the East was so much weaker than the West. On the other hand, during Jordan's playing days, the East was generally considered the stronger conference, as Jordan had to battle through hard-fought rivalries against the Bad Boy Pistons, Patrick Ewing's Knicks, mm. the Shaq Penny-led Magic, mm. and Reggie Miller's Pacers. Mm. That said, if you want to blame LeBron's <laughs> failure in the finals on the level of his competition, I won't argue with you. But let's also not blow it out of proportion. If you look at the average number of wins of their finals opponents, you'll see that LeBron's finals opponents average 60.8 wins per season. Whereas Jordan's finals opponents averaged 61.2 wins per season. Sweet. It's close. So right. as it turns out, both players face stiff competition uh -huh. in the finals. One just one more often. So yeah, it is very close. Too close to even to, to care about the discrepancy. But the result is what matters. So same same type of competition they were facing. One guy won a hundred percent of those final series, and the other guy won now forty percent of those final series. Which one you pick? But a big reason we don't hold the 93 Suns, the 96 Sonics, or the 98 Jazz in the same regard as some of LeBron's finals opponents is because, unlike LeBron's adversaries, Jordan's opponents never actually won the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Wow, that's a good point. <laughs> that the difference between get winning it. the title that's a good point. Yeah, you get it, huh? is huge. That's a good and point. And the reason those teams never won the title? Michael Jordan. This guy. Wow. Look, <laughs> I'm not trying to say that Jordan's opponents were as good as the oh, Warriors man. teams that LeBron faced four times in the finals. The truth is that Jordan never played a juggernaut quite like that. He was but there's a juggernaut. a pretty good reason for That's that. That's what I'm saying, though. I ain't gonna lie, y'all boys, man. That 73 and 19, whatever, whatever, I don't, whatever the record was, 73 and 9 Warriors team, to go down 3 and 1 in the finals and come back, though? That has to be the greatest finals run of all time. I'll say that. Like, y'all got to give credit when credit is due. Give Bron his credit. OGs, I know the OGs watching the video. Give Bron his credit, bro. That, that has to be the most impressive finals run of all time. Let's, come on, give, it, give Bron that at least. You feel me? Because they had <laughs> Steph. But, but it's, bro, you know the team, bro. Look it up. You know the team, yeah, yeah. bro. The team was stacked. They won 73 games, bro. It's the best regular season record in NBA history. <laughs> and to come back and beat them is crazy, bro. That That's tough. All right, Groovy. Um, yes, I, I do give LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin Love credit for pulling that off. That was, that was a hell of a final series. But I'll pose this question to you. Would you rather beat the team that went 73 and 9? But failed in the playoff and in, 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 in the finals, or would you rather be the team that went seventy two and ten and won the finals? I'd rather be that team. I'd rather be the king. Jordan's Bulls were the juggernaut. They were the team winning seventy plus games. Yeah. They were the team with the target on their back every year. Mm. And as the Warriors okay. showed us, that's not an easy place to be. As great as the Warriors were, okay. they were never able to string together three That's consecutive championships. Jordan's Bulls did it twice. So what's the greater achievement? Mm. Beating the juggernaut 
or being the juggernaut? Be beating the juggernaut once or being the juggernaut six times? Being the juggernaut or beating the juggernaut? Think about it, Groovy. That's a good question, too. What's more impressive? Think about it. <sighs> I don't know. That's a that's a good point too, though. Come on. But beating though the juggernaut, going down three one against all odds, against arguably the greatest regular season team in NBA history. Groovy, groovy. But if you're the greatest of all time, shouldn't you be the juggernaut? You know what I mean. That's a cool thing as as a as an underdog story. Why is LeBron the underdog if he's the greatest of all time? He should be leading the juggernaut. I don't know. That's impressive as hell, bro. Or to be more specific, beating the juggernaut one time out of the four times he faced them, or being the juggernaut year after uh, year after year. That's a good point. Uh, though. Doing it again year after, after year, year after year. After year. Uh, yeah. There's no doubt that LeBron's Come on. victory over the 73 win Warriors was the highlight of his career. That was the highlight. But it's not the show. first time that an underdog has won the championship. Yep. And there actually have been much bigger underdogs who ended up winning the title. But how many times have we seen a player lead his team to six championships yes. in eight years? Six, whoa. <laughs> six championships in eight yeah, years? He's king of the mountain. Damn. Yep. I didn't know that, though. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what? One team. Nah, bro. And to go six and zero oh is. Yeah, man. <sighs> That's what you want to be. You want to be the king. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not a biased dude, bro. And I give, like I said in the intro, I do give credit when credit is due. I would rather be six and zero oh in the finals than to just have that one year. There you go. That you know that I'm just the underdog and I just you know pull out the victory and just pull this mission impossible. Achievement, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool story. <laughs> Six and zero in the final. I, I would, I would take that. I would rather be well, that guy. Bill this is why I like, I, I, I like Groovy. <laughs> he's, he's proving it again. Excuse me. Uh, he's proving it again on this video because, yeah, he's open minded. He, he's, he's open minded and he's willing to learn. I was glad he said that because if if he stuck with, I'd rather just win once out of four times. And just just because I say I I I beat I beat the best team in the league, versus be the best team in the league six years out of eight years, I I, I would have had to question a little bit. So I'm glad he came around on that one. Celtics ever accomplished that feat in the NBA That's when they crazy. incredibly won 11 championships in 13 seasons. However, 11 championships in 13 seasons. Damn, Bill Russell. Yeah, it was a different league. <laughs> it was a hell? very different time. But I ain't gonna lie. I seen somebody in the comments saying Bill Russell was playing plumbers. Him and Will Chamber. Man. <laughs> what y'all think about that in the comments? No, hey, look, no disrespect <laughs> to the OGs, the legends of the game, but like, come on, let's be honest. The competition level back then in the, what was that, the 70s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, I don't know, 80s, the competition level wasn't. It's near as where it was in the 90s, in the 2000s. All right, Groovy, I used to have that same position, but I, I came around at one point because I, I thought about it this way. What matters is how, how you dominate in your era, right? So in Bill Russell's era, Will Chamberlain's era, those were the best basketball players in the world at that time. So what matters is how, how you end up um, versus your competition, so we can't take anything. I can never take anything away from Bill Russell. Um, I can't. Um, I just have Jordan above Russell. One, because I never got to really see Russell play. Two, uh, would be because I think Jordan is more of the complete player. So when we're talking on an individual level, I got Jordan all day, every day. And then to go 6-6 six and six in the finals, you know, like he did enough winning on top of being the the best individual player I've ever seen ever that that's that's where I give him that crown and then you add all the other accolades and it's just gravy at that point but yeah don't take away I mean I can't tell you what to do but I would suggest don't take away anything from the past legends like Wilt, Kuzi, uh Russell, all these guys, Big O because they were dominating 
the best players in the world at that point. And that's what really matters. Also, one thing I have as a hit against LeBron is he hasn't really dominated any, uh, he hasn't dominated an era. It was Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan dominating one era. And then after that, he shared an era with Steph Curry as far as finals wins. But then Steph Curry gets a tiebreaker because he beat LeBron in the finals, uh, what, three times? And LeBron won one, if I, if I, if I have that correct. So the tiebreaker goes to Steph. So you got to at least dominate your era first to be in the GOAT conversation to begin with. And that's why a lot of people have a problem with LeBron even being in this conversation at all. At least Kobe kind of dominated an era, you know what I mean? So we can talk about that. Same with Magic Johnson. And it's, you know, the 2010s. Back then, there was an average of less than 10 teams in the league. Yeah, see? And only a couple rounds of playoffs. So it was considerably easier to win a title. Yeah, exactly. And no player, not even Bill Russell, ever had a run of winning 25 of 26 playoff series as Michael Jordan did. Damn, bro. And Michael's pattern of winning goes beyond the NBA. Let's not forget that Jordan yep. has never won anything but gold in the Olympics. And he also earned an Ooh. NCAA championship. In which he hit the first of two iconic championship winning shots in his career. All so fill me on this one, Groovy. Jordan essentially has been to nine championship situations, and he's nine for nine. One in the NCAA, two in the Olympics, six in, in the NBA. Nine for nine. That is to say, wow. when it comes to winning, the check mark clearly goes to Jordan. Oh, yeah. Damn, I did not know Jordan won an NCAA championship. And in the Olympics, he only won gold. Two. He never had a silver or bronze medal. Nope. That's impressive. And 6-0 in the finals? Yep, 9 for 9. Yeah, got to give it to Jordan. On to the fourth GOAT criteria, got statistics. Statistics, This okay. one is a bit more complicated. I mean, you got to get this on the bronze. Not if you go averages. Two players who played in different eras under different rules at different positions. One way of doing it is to simply look at the eight traditional statistics of basketball. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Points, assists, oh. rebounds, steals, steals blocks, blocks, field goal percentage, free throw percentage, and turnover. We'll focus on per game stats rather than cumulative stats. Okay, Since cumulative per game. stats, such as total career points and total career there assists, you go. He's really speak it. to longevity, oh, which is already its own Brian. category of the GOAT analysis. Per game stats, on the other hand, oh, is per more game like apples stats. To apples okay, this is gonna be interesting. It's per so look, game. That's how it should be, though. Yeah, it's it's what what did you what did you put out on a nightly basis? Oh man, this is gonna get fun. Additional stats. We see that Jordan leads LeBron. Okay. In five of them, points per game, steals per game, blocks per game, free throw percentage, and fewer turnovers. LeBron leads in the other three: assists per game, rebounds okay. per game, and field goal percentage. Mm. But that's a pretty simplistic way of looking at statistics. What if wow. he instead? He could, and it's funny, he could have just left it right there, and that would have been a clear win for Jordan. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> the analytics. Probably oh, analytics, the most well known yeah. analytics stat is player efficiency rating. Oh, it's game over or now. PER for short. This metric was created by respected basketball analyst John Hollinger to give an overall rating to a player's performance based on traditional stats like the ones we just mentioned. Jordan has led the league in PER seven times, mm. LeBron six times. Okay. Jordan has finished top three in PER ten times, LeBron nine times. In mm. fact, Jordan has the highest career PER in both the regular season and the playoffs. Mm. Another popular <laughs> analytics stat Damn. is win shares. Jordan has led the league in win shares eight times, LeBron five times. Jordan okay. has finished top three in win shares 11 times, LeBron six times. Okay. When it comes to win shares per 48 minutes, Jordan has the highest career rating in both the regular season and the playoffs. Damn. What about And Boston? I have to point out, the rating goes up in the playoffs, of course. It's not like it's a, it's a surprise. Hey, LeBron, how'd that happen? Career rating in both the regular season and the playoffs. Damn. What about box plus minus? <laughs> Until recently, LeBron was actually ahead of Jordan in career <laughs> box plus minus. Kicking in, it's kicking in. <laughs> oh my God! But after the 2017 season gave Russell Westbrook the greatest single season box plus minus yeah. in history by a wide margin, the architect of box plus minus realized that the stat was fundamentally flawed. So he made some changes to improve its formula. As a result, 
Michael Jordan now has the highest career box plus minus in both the regular season and the playoffs. And lastly, what about value over replacement player, which on its face seems to favor LeBron James? What the hell? Well, value over replacement player. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> is a cumulative stat. And as previously noted, cumulative stats speak more to longevity than they do game to game dominance. Okay, makes that sense. That said, according to value over replacement player, Jordan owns six of the nine greatest Damn. individual seasons ever played. Damn. And on a per game basis. Wow. I, I forgot about this. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, David Robinson, shout out. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. The nine greatest individual seasons. Then LeBron James. Ever Michael played. Jordan. Damn. And on a per game basis. Wow. MJ's career rating and value over replacement player is the highest of all time in both the regular season and the playoffs. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Are you noticing a theme here? Not yeah. only does Jordan beat LeBron in every ratable analytics stat, <laughs> he consistently ranks as the best ever across All the board. All I see is first, yeah. first, first, first. Yeah. That's how you're the greatest of all time. You got to be the best. You got to be the best. And then you got to win to back it up. You know, you got to have both. If Jordan got all these stats and, and he didn't win when it counted, it would mean nothing. But he did both. In a lesser known stat called Game Score, another brainchild of John Let's Hollinger. Let's do it. Game Score measures a player's performance in a single game, so it won't tell us who's had the better career, uh -huh. but it does provide insight into who's had the greatest games. Now, we only have Game Score stats since 1983, so you won't see any mentions of Wilt Chamberlain here. Mm. That said, of the 100 highest game scores ever recorded, incredibly, 19 of them belong to Michael Jordan. Damn. In other words, nearly one out of every five of the best single game performances over the last four decades has been by MJ. Damn! The score of all time for Jordan's 69.18 <laughs> rebound masterpiece. Comparatively, 69 LeBron points has and 18 rebounds. Yes, let that sink in for a second. 69 points? Was that 18 rebounds? Uh huh. Most people don't talk about that part. 100 game scores. When discussing the GOAT, Nick Wright is fond of asking this question. The aliens come down. You have one game to save humanity. Who's your first pick in the history of the MJ. world? Well, Nick, I think we have our answer. <laughs> now that I bro, I'm getting school numbers, right now, bro. What the hell? Hardly anyone watching this video knows how to calculate PER, win shares, box plus minus, value over a replacement player, or game score. Yeah, I don't know what the and hell this guy's talking about, but <laughs> he's schooling me. Goodwill hunting. <laughs> So let's Can go back just to the say that. Can you just say that. You guys talk. Hold up. Plus minus value over a replacement player or game score. Yeah, I don't know what and the hell this guy's you. talking about, this but is basketball. he's schooling. <laughs> hunting. So let's go back to the traditional stats that we all know and understand. All right, let's do it. But okay. this time, let's add context to them. Okay. What do I mean by context? Well, some positions are simply better than others at racking up certain stats. Let's take rebounding yeah. as an example. Uh -huh. In a vacuum, if we simply compare the number of rebounds per game of Brooke Lopez and Jason Kidd, we might think that Lopez was the better rebounder. The truth is, relative to their positions, Lopez is statistically one of the worst rebounding yeah. centers in NBA history, whereas <laughs> Kidd is statistically one of the best, best rebounding guards, guards in yeah. NBA history. Mm -hmm. But even a poor rebounding center can grab more rebounds than a great rebounding guard solely by virtue of their roles on the court. Yeah. So it makes sense that, to understand the context of a player's stats, we should compare them to the respective positions that they played. That makes sense. Yeah. When comparing LeBron James forward. to the other small forwards who have played at least 500 yeah. NBA games, and this Jordan is where was he ranks. Shooting guard. Overall, that's pretty impressive. Now let's see how Jordan compares to all shooting guards who have played at least 500 NBA games. Let's see, games. let's see. Damn! <laughs> well, small forwards, Jordan's on another level. Nah, bro, what He's the hell? The every major statistical category. Man. And there isn't a single category where LeBron is better than MJ relative to his position, oh other my than assists. God. It's not even so close. So to sum up statistics, whether comparing traditional stats or analytics, and especially when judging these know, players bro. in the context of the positions they played, Jordan has a noticeable Damn. edge over LeBron. As such, his whole world, his whole world is just going upside down right now. It's, but I'm proud of him for not for not you know being in denial. He's embracing it. It just hurts. I have to give the check mark to Jordan. 
Bing. Oh and that God. takes us to the last category in our GOAT analysis, <laughs> the eye test. What and the to hell? Be clear, by eye test, I don't mean which of these players is bigger, faster, or jumps higher. Uh -huh. None of that is relevant unless we're having a track and field competition. <laughs> and frankly, if physical measurables mattered, then George Murison would be in the GOAT conversation. No, what I mean by the eye test is, if you sat an average basketball fan in front of a TV to mm -hmm. watch a player in action, right. what would he notice that the player is and is not great at? I think Groovy's going to be fair on this one because he started this off with uh, doing the mixtape of Jordan and he was blown away. Thankfully, I happen to be an average basketball fan. Yeah, and I've had the too. privilege of watching both LeBron and Jordan during their playing me days. Too. So and before he answered this, bro, Bron do got a couple weaknesses. Free throws. We all know Bron not a great free throw shooter. He's a decent three-point shooter. That's all I can really think of right now. Mid range. And then with Jordan, Defense. bro, watching his highlights, bro, from the last video, bro, like I said, I ain't see no flaws in his game, bro. Like, he was the whole package. Hey, you know what I'm saying? He got good. the offensive package and he got the defensive package. You know what I'm saying? And from this video, bro, got the stats to back it up, too, bro. Like, so as far as the eye test, bro, not being biased at all. Coming from a Brian fan, bro. Since birth, like I gotta go with Jordan, bro. Hey, I'm proud of you though, man. I'm proud of you for that. That's a big, that's a big step. I give you longevity, you give me the eye test. Cause it's only fair. Gotta go Unlike a lot of my fellow YouTubers, I haven't merely relied on highlight videos. Here's what my eyes told me when I saw Michael Jordan play, particularly during his playing days with the Chicago Bulls. He was the best offensive player in the game. He was arguably the best defensive player in the game. Yeah. He had the best mid-range game. Yeah. He was the best finisher at the mm. rim. Damn. He had the best post-up game, yep. which mm. is incredible considering most players who dominated the post were big yep. men. That's crazy. He was widely considered the most clutch player in the game. He was regarded by opponents as the fiercest competitor on the court. He was regarded by teammates as the hardest worker in practice. And when all was said and Damn, done, amongst bro. the other stars of his generation, he was the greatest winner. Yep. Now, when you're playing That's against the elite of the elite <laughs> athletes of the world, to be the best at any one of those things is pretty remarkable. But to be the best at all of them, I tell you, it's impossible. Yeah. But for the fact that we saw Michael Jordan do it. Yeah. And when it I, comes to the GOAT debate, that's the biggest hurdle that's facing crazy. LeBron. He's basically being compared to a guy who was great at everything and practically had no weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. Groovy, I'm going to be fair here. When I, when I go back and, and I'm, I'm watching you go through this journey, it would be really hard for me to believe any of this if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. I grew up watching it. And then, and then I've seen everybody play since Jordan and watch them just come up short. Um, and it's not their fault. The fact that Jordan was able to do all of this, it's, it's mind blowing still. And like I said, I, I witnessed it. I lived it, but yeah, if I didn't, I would really have a hard time believing it because how could somebody be that good? It's, it's mind boggling, but I'm telling you, and we're all here to tell you this was real. This is true. We got spoiled. Yeah. Seriously, judging by the eye test, what's the worst thing we could say about Michael Jordan's game? Probably that he wasn't a very good three-point shooter. Jordan shot 33% from beyond the arc in an era when the average player also shot 33%. So when it came to three-point shooting, he, was he wasn't good, he wasn't bad, he was just average. average. Okay. But remember that Michael played in an age when the three-point shot wasn't a big part of the game. Right, During right. Jordan's years, teams averaged only nine and a half three-point attempts per game. And Michael himself attempted less than two threes per yeah, game. Yeah, and a lot of times one of those threes were a buzzer, you know, at, at, the, at the end of a... Uh at the end of a quarter, just chucking like a half court or full court shot. And if being an average okay. three point shooter is a weakness of Michael's game, well, then we also have to call it a weakness of LeBron's game. The difference is that LeBron plays percentage. in an era where the three point shot is a huge part of the game. Mm -hmm. During the years in which LeBron played, teams attempted on average over 21 threes per game. And LeBron himself averaged 4.3 three point attempts per game, or mm -hmm. two and a half times as many as Jordan. Okay. Despite the increased emphasis on threes, LeBron's career shooting percentage from beyond the arc is only a hair better than Jordan at 34%. 34? And it's actually slightly below his peers. 
who averaged 35% from three during his era. Mm. But to reiterate, being <laughs> an average three-point shooter was by was far the worst part of MJ's game. For LeBron, it's not even close. Wow. LeBron, in fact, has four major weaknesses as a basketball player, each of which is readily apparent to anyone who has actually watched him play. There he goes. First, with the he's not a good free throw shooter. Yeah. Wait, what did he say? Actually watched him play. There he goes. First, with the he's not. <laughs> yeah. I thought that's what he said. There he go with the flop. Yeah, MJ didn't do that either. He didn't flop around, man. He wasn't like a little dolphin. Not a good free throw shooter. Yeah. For his career, LeBron has shot around 73.5% from ah, the free throw line, which on, is LeBron. pretty poor for a player who handles the ball as much as he it does. It is, considering I'm 42-year-old, like washed out, and I could average 80% easily right now for the free throw line. No no problem. Probably with, with no practice, too. I could just go out there right now and hit 8 out of 10. No, no problem. And I'm not trying to like pretend like I'm a badass. I'm just saying, how could I shoot better free throws than the greatest player of all time? I am not sold. In fact, many analysts point out that at the end of games, LeBron shies oh, away from driving to the basket. Look at the score. What sick. is it? Oh, overtime. Yeah, this is clutch. This is clutch. Was it both free throws? Let's point out that at yeah, the end of could, game. Yeah, he could close this shit out right now. He bricked it. LeBron shies oh, away from dude. driving to the basket. <laughs> Look at the score. And he bricked the them line. both. <laughs> I didn't catch that the first time. Yeah, man. You don't want him at the line in clutch time. Oh, he missed two. Yeah, he missed I don't them know both. whether that's true, but what I do know is that the odds of LeBron oh, having two consecutive free throws is statistically Oh, not my much God. I, I don't remember this one. Look at him. This is four seconds left in overtime. They're down by one. LeBron gets two free throws and he clanks them both, man. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh no. Flip. Jordan, on the other hand, shot a solid 83.5% from the free throw line during his career. And MJ never shied away from contact at the end of games. Oh my God, yeah. Tough. LeBron's that's second beat my sons, is man. that he's an inconsistent defender. Sure, uh, he's had some years where he was elite defensively, which is evidence by his numerous selections. That's the best block in NBA history right there. Nah, MJ did that with two hands at 40 years old. All defensive. Give me that, but Jordan fans. I'm sorry, he's I can't. It was a good block, though, but I can't. I can't give you that one. Practically been a liability on the defensive end. That's crazy, Compare that to MJ, who during his Bulls days was a consistently elite defender. In fact, Jordan is the only player to rank in the top five amongst all guards in both steals per game and blocks per wow. game for his career. Wow, that's impressive. Additionally, that was too quick for me. Steals number four, blocks number three. I always forget, man, D-Wade just inched past him when it comes to blocks. But yeah, that's why I liked D-Wade back then. He played both ends. All guards in both steals per game and blocks per wow. game for his career. That's impressive. Additionally, Michael led his that's position impressive. in defensive win shares practically every year that he played for and the Bulls. And that's while he, while he's winning scoring titles, Groovy. So he's he's being the best on on the offensive end and the best on the defensive end. It is it is beyond incredible. An incredible ten times. LeBron, Stop. comparatively, has led his position in defensive win shares on just four occasions. Damn. And in five of his last seven seasons... Why are they doing LeBron like, like this, bro? They showing all his bad his plays, We're just bro. showing the truth. Now, I know Jordan got some bad LeBron's plays. recent fall-off on the defensive <laughs> end as a byproduct of his resting on defense so that he can have more energy on offense. And we can debate the merits of that strategy. Damn. But resting on defense is not they something Michael Jordan like that, was bro. ever Stop showing his bad do. highlights, bro. Heck, Damn. No, it, it gets worse nowadays, though. This video was done before the Lakers. The Lakers time. Now he does that, like, every game. You'd get a highlight like that multiple times where he just starts walking down, walking down the court, letting his team go four on five at a disadvantage because he doesn't want to run down the court. It's not just a bad highlight, man. It's uh this is a it's a habit at this point. 40-year-old, he was busting his tail on Boom. the defensive end. <laughs> now that's a block. Damn. Yeah, but what about the notion that LeBron Hold on, he was 40 doing that? Yeah, look at it. his tail on the defensive end. But what about Damn. the notion that that's LeBron's been the more versatile defender? 
LeBron supporters will argue that he can guard positions 1 through 5 on the court, such as when he, he guarded can. Derrick Rose for stretches in the 2011 playoffs. He can. But LeBron's guarding the opposing team's point guard or center isn't something that happens very often. In fact, during his career, LeBron has spent less than 5% of his total minutes guarding the opposing players 1 or Why 5. Why showing all LeBron's so the versatility worth highlight, argument though, is so highly long, exaggerated. Dang. And look, when it comes to versatility, Hometown Buffet may have a more versatile menu than Spago. That doesn't make it a better restaurant. LeBron's third weakness is that he's not a very good shooter. And this is a pretty significant flaw for someone claiming to be the GOAT. And why are they showing off his air ball? The ball is the quintessential <laughs> skill in the game of basketball. The, the thing that happened here, Groovy, is that they, they, did, they started out with Jordan's weaknesses. And... Uh, it's just that now we're on LeBron's weaknesses and it's taken a lot longer to go through his weaknesses because there's a lot more of them. So it hurts. I get it. It hurts you right now to see this, but that's why it's happening. Making my boy look bad. Bro. Everyone practices, <laughs> whether on the playground, at the YMCA, or in the NBA. Now, some people will contend that LeBron is actually a better shooter than Jordan because he has a better career field goal percentage. And yes, LeBron's career field goal percentage is 50.4% compared to Jordan's 49.7%. Okay. But recall what I said about placing stats into proper context. To help us understand context when it comes to shooting... Oh, this shooting, is going to get really funny. This is about to get really funny. I remember this. Allow me to introduce DeAndre Jordan and Tyson Chandler. We all know that DeAndre and Tyson were great rebounders and defenders. But what if I told you that they yeah, were oops. also two of the greatest shooters of all time? That would be certifiably crazy. Yeah. Yet if you look at all the shooting metrics, field goal percentage, effective field goal percentage, true shooting percentage, both of these guys rank near the top in NBA history. Of course, there's an obvious wow, reason for crazy. that. Yeah. As we all know, but both yes, DeAndre Jordan and Tyson Duncan. Chandler Oops. take a lot of their shot attempts on dunks, layups, and putbacks, yeah. which are extremely high percentage shots. Well, guess what? So does LeBron James. In fact, every single year of his career, the shot that LeBron James has taken the most has been within zero to three feet from the basket. Wow. In other words, dunks, layups, and That's putbacks. That's an interesting fact. More than one <laughs> of every three of LeBron's shots has been within this point blank yep. range, wow. which is aided by his playing in an era where it's been relatively easy to get to the I, rim. What was Partic that play, by the way? Why'd he pump fake? Wow. Which is aided by his playing in a... Who, who's he pump faking to? <laughs> this is a committed defensive... Uh, uh, assignment right here. He's staying. Mero. He actually made this shot harder because he hesitated. Where it's been relatively easy to get to the rim, particularly when compared to the physical era in which Jordan played. Mm. And just like every other player, LeBron is really effective from zero to three feet, That's hitting good over seventy-three percent right of these shots. But how does LeBron fare from outside this range? According to BasketballReference.com, LeBron's shooting percentage from outside three feet is 37.5%. It's even poorer in the playoffs where he shoots 35.9%. And it's even worse in close and late situations. In the yeah, last two minutes it. of games where the score is within five points, LeBron hits only 31 points. Uh, oh, that's your clutch Look, killer. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that these Damn. numbers aren't very good. Which is probably why in the 2013 finals, right the strategy against the school. Heat was to basically dare LeBron James oh, to shoot. Man. And keep in mind, this was against LeBron in his prime. Can you imagine an opposing coach using a similar strategy against MJ? Now, yeah, LeBron no, actually they, they sent three guys after MJ. They never left him open like, like they leave LeBron open. Credits the Spurs for forcing him to work on his jump shot. But it's not as if his results have gotten much better they since haven't. then. I'm Here's LeBron and I'm disappointed as a basketball fan that it hasn't. Like, come on, man. Improve that free throw shot. Improve the mid-range shot. Get a post game. You know, he's hitting He's hitting a little more of his threes now, I guess, but he's shooting a ton of them, so he better. But just his overall shot has not improved. He's still getting all of his, all of his points at the, you know, right at the rim, zero to three feet percentage from outside three feet over the last six years yikes yeah, well given this worse. he is consistent 
For comparison, consider that in the last year of Michael Jordan's career, as an aging player on the Washington Wizards, Jordan shot close to 42% from outside three feet. Mm. While that's certainly not great, it means that even as a 40-year-old shell of his former self, Jordan was still a better shooter, a far better shooter than LeBron James. That's crazy. Unfortunately, Basketball Reference doesn't have advanced shooting metrics from Michael's Bulls days when he was a significantly more efficient scorer. But few would argue that Michael was anything but a lethal jump shooter when he was wearing red and black. When it comes to shooting, That's all crazy. of us can recall practicing shots on the blacktop. Counting down, three, two, one. Oh guys, before... this is gonna be, this is gonna be really funny. Launching a shot at the rim. Well, if you were pretending to be LeBron James, you'd brick almost two <laughs> Actually, that's not entirely true. Nah, if bro, why is they clowning, bro? You would like that, much, bro. much worse. Oh. Don't do it! You can still earn income while learning how to Oh, code. man. He... Get out of there. Gotta get no YouTube premium. Required. And that gets me to the last major weakness of LeBron's game. <laughs> oh, his performance. Yeah, he did. More accurately. Hey, you did, man. Groovy, you got a you got an official fan in me, man. I, I'm 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 excited to see your journey. You you're an, you're honest about this stuff. Lack of performance in the clutch. Remember when people were praising LeBron for making a couple of buzzer beaters? He do got a lot of ago? buzzer beater playoff wins. These stats to claim that LeBron was better in the clutch than Jordan. Mm -hmm. But look at these numbers carefully. Okay. What stands out to you? Hold on, let me see what stands out. Field goal, field goal attempts. Buzzer beaters. How few games there are, I think. What stands out? What? The fact that he got more attempts or what? How about this? People were using a sample size of less than one shot per season to make the case that LeBron was more clutch yeah, than Jordan. Th yeah. That would be the equivalent of polling just 100 people in the country to try to predict the winner of the next presidential election. So let's use more telling stats, shall we? Okay. Here's a situation that's often used to determine a player's clutchness. Five seconds to go in the fourth quarter or overtime, and your team needs a bucket to either win or tie the game. It answers the age-old question, who do you want taking the last shot with the game on Larry the line? Larry Bird. No, just kidding. <laughs> now in this situation, MJ all day. It turns out that in the regular season and playoffs combined, LeBron has taken 94 such Air shots. Mm. That's a pretty good sample size. And how many of those 94 shots has LeBron made? It. 19. For a shooting percentage of 20%. Mm. Let me repeat that. 20%. Damn. Guys, that's not bad in the clutch. <laughs> that's atrocious. <sighs> Michael Jordan in the same situation? Shot roughly 50%. 50? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Jordan's performance Almost under half? pressure was the same as it was throughout the rest of that's the game. That's the definition of that's clutch. And that, my bro. friends, is the definition of that clutch. clutch, yeah. That's so yeah. there you go. Yeah, Groovy, that the is the definition of clutch. That means no amount of pressure is getting to him. It, it, it doesn't phase him at all. doesn't matter what's on the line. He's still going to be just as efficient and accurate and consistent as he ever is and that's because he practices as hard as as you know he plays in the game he, he's playing he's playing game level practices and that's what he did his whole career and that's the reason why so nothing ever phases him or gets him out of a funk or makes him question his abilities that's mj man come on over man come on over groovy there's plenty of room for you over here I test, our eyes tell us that one player, Michael Jordan, oh is great God, at everything bro. and has practically no weaknesses. And the other player, LeBron James, while also having a ton of strengths, has several obvious flaws to his game. And when all is uh -oh. said and done, after analyzing the five key factors of being the GOAT, Jordan gets four check marks to LeBron's yeah. one. Making <laughs> this GOAT debate, well, not much of a yeah. debate at all. It's not a Damn. debate at all. No, and, and, that's, and that's exactly how I put it, too. I've been saying I, I get some gripe from like the true haters, but, you know, I give LeBron longevity. Yeah, we have to put into question. Did he do it legally or has he had some some help from certain substances and the load managing and all that? I get it. But also he's been playing, what, 21 years and he is still, you know, he's still producing a little bit so longevity i got to give it to, to lebron durability though if we can throw that in there 
durability is going to MJ all day. But outside of this, accomplishments, MJ, winning, obvious, MJ, stats, obvious, MJ, the eye test, not even close, MJ. So this is this is just how it is, man. It's just the truth. Well, not much of a debate at all. Damn. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that LeBron James is a bad mm. player. He's a phenomenal player. Thank you. Personally, I have him on basketball's Mount Rushmore. Thank you. Along with Jordan, Kareem, Will Chamberlain, and Bill Russell. Because it seemed like he was just He's bashing just his brass and brown the whole video. No, I mean, it's, it's just the truth, though. You know what I mean? The resistance comes because he really shouldn't be compared to Michael Jordan. And if you are compared to Michael Jordan, this is what happens. Like, the truth comes out. The facts start coming out. So it's really, I mean, he, he did this to himself, which is the unfortunate thing for him, is he called himself the greatest of all time, and that's why we have to do this. But if that wasn't the case and he wasn't comparing himself to Michael Jordan, we'd have no problem saying, yeah, he's one of the, the, the greatest to play the game, you know? But he doesn't belong there in that conversation with Michael Jordan. There's a big separation. There's an ocean between them. So that's why it happens. I wouldn't be sitting around bashing LeBron James if LeBron James didn't call himself the greatest of all time on multiple occasions. Because, no, you're not the greatest of all time. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to tell you why. That's what it is. It's defense at that point. You know, it's like, get, you know, I didn't throw the first punch. I got hit and now I'm retaliating. You know what I mean? Because outside of that, I used to leave LeBron alone. I, I didn't say anything bad about LeBron. I'm like, yeah, he's good. He's a good player. I wish he could be more clutch, and I wish he was a better shooter, played better defense, and I wish he was better at closing out games. You know, that's what it was. But I'm like, yeah, he's a fantastic player. Now I'm a little more defensive about it because the narrative that, that he started about being the GOAT is just so far from the truth. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not here to spread the truth and be honest. Just to underscore how good MJ was, let's ignore LeBron and Jordan for a minute and focus on the other three players highlighted here, Kareem, Wilt, and Bill Russell. Most would agree that these are the three greatest centers in NBA history, and each of them has a strong case to justify his standing among basketball yeah, royalty. Yeah, throw in there. Wilt is an all-time great because he was an offensive force of nature, and he holds a ton of NBA records. Russell is in the conversation because he was a dominant defender and a perennial champion. Mm -hmm. Kareem also led his team to numerous titles, and in terms of individual awards and accolades, was the most decorated yep. of the three. Not to mention, he had the NBA's most unguardable shot. The hook shot. Now imagine a center that had all the best qualities from these three titans. A player like that would be the basketball equivalent of Thanos. Now <laughs> add to that player the highest level of intangible attributes, such as a tireless work ethic, unmatched killer instinct, and an ability to deliver in the clutch. And Jordan. And now you'd essentially be looking at Thanos with all of the Infinity Stones. And no one would question whether this player was the greatest of right. all time. But the truth is, we don't have to imagine such a player. That player already existed. Wow. He just happened to be a shooting guard, <laughs> not a center. When you think about wow. it, Michael Jordan is the real-life version of an overpowered video game the character. The closest thing to a superhero I've ever experienced in my life. He's the closest thing to a superhero ever. He had all the qualities we look for in a superstar athlete. Wow. And he had it in spades. He's basically Babe Ruth. If Babe Ruth played defense like Willie Mays. And that's why, even in comparison to the other all-time greats, he is truly in a class of his own. Damn. Simply put, he's, he's the, the GOAT. goat. That's great. Yeah, got to give him his flowers, man. He earned it. Yeah, them highlights is crazy. We can't take it away from Look him for no reason. Unless somebody actually earns it. A guy like LeBron can't just say, oh, I'm the greatest of all time. And then that. He was a guard. Too. Yeah. You can't just say you're the best. I just wish I was alive to see I wish this. you were too, man. It was fantastic. Literally, man. Box office every day, man. These highlights is crazy, bro. No and flaws. And this is him winning games, too. Double clutch game winner. Like, yeah. 
close wow, up. I just, oh, I just got goosebumps. Nice bed. For Damn. A game. Damn, Utah. <sighs> How you feel, young man? I don't know what to say after that video, <laughs> man. I just got schooled for 30 minutes on why Jordan is better than Brian and why Jordan is the GOAT. For real, man. And I'm not even going to be biased at all. You know, I'm not going to show no favoritism. After watching that, bro, I do agree, bro. Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time, bro. Like... Man. Wow. I wish more young guys like you were as open-minded, even like half as open-minded as you, to take in new knowledge and new information. Proud of you, Groovy. Proud of you, man. Bro just had no weaknesses, bro, at all, you know. And the statistics that he showed on the video was crazy. He was good on offense, defense. Winning percentages is crazy. Shooting percentages is crazy. The winning. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm speechless, yeah. bro. To all the OGs out there, man, I apologize, man. You did, man. Jordan is him. He liked that, bro. I just wish I would have saw yeah. it, bro. I wish I was, you know, alive to see, witness this. You know what I'm saying? To witness his era, you know, of basketball. But, you know. Hey, real quick. You don't need to apologize for nothing. All, you just did what we were, all of us have been asking LeBron fans to do. Just look into Jordan, you know? Don't listen to Nick Wright for a minute. Just look into it. See what we're talking about, you know? Experience it and then make a decision. You have nothing to apologize, man. You have nothing to apologize for. Thank you for doing this. I don't know what to say, bro. Like, as a Bron fan, I, I do admit, bro, Jordan is the GOAT, bro. Like, 6-0 in the finals is OD. It would it say 10 scoring titles? Oh, my God. In my last video, I think somebody said Jordan would average 50 <laughs> in this era of basketball. And I agree, bro. I agree, Groovy. bro. MJ would average whatever he needed to average that would give his team the best chance to win a championship. And whether that's 50 or that's 30, he would do it. No doubt in my mind. I agree, bro. Um, I ain't got nothing to say, man. Y'all let me know in the <laughs> comments down below, man. Uh, who y'all goat, man. After watching that, bro, gotta go Jordan bro like he, he's the greatest bro he even is. though I'm still a Bron fan I'm a huge Bron okay. fan there's a difference between being a fan and admitting who the greatest of all time is I got lucky because I grew up idolizing Michael Jordan from like basically being a toddler till now so my favorite player is Michael Jordan and the greatest player of all time is Michael Jordan and my personal goat is Michael Jordan that's lucky but you want to know the other two, my other two favorite players, Steve Nash and Dwayne Wade. Like those, those are, those are my two other favorite players. Me personally, you know, um, I like those dudes a lot. <laughs> I love their game. Um, but guess what? Neither of those guys are anywhere near the goat conversation, but that's okay because no matter what, no one can take away from how I feel about those players and are always going to be two of my, my, my favorite players of all time. Um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that no matter how much I like Steve Nash, um, Michael Jordan's the freaking goat, you know, there's just no doubt. Been a Brian fan since birth. You know what I'm saying? Always going to be a yeah. Brian fan. Always going to support should. Brian, but Jordan was that nigga, bro. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> He was that dude, bro. He was clutch as hell, too. That's another thing about <laughs> Brian, too, though, bro. Like, ah, Brian not as, as clutch, no. bro. His free throw percentages is low. and not really a great or shooter, defender. you know. You know, so it's a couple of weaknesses I can point out about Brian's game. But as as I'm watching this Jordan video, Puppy. um. I don't see any weaknesses in his game, bro. You know what I'm saying, man? But 
Y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think, man. Who y'all go? Um, y'all let me know in the comments what other videos y'all want me to react to yeah, next. Let's continue the journey. Like the video if y'all enjoyed this done. reaction. And subscribe. Subscribe. Already subscribe, done. man. Shout out Jordan, man. I'm going to give him the greatest of all time. But, you know, it's still Brian, Brian, though. <laughs> now you're just trolling, Groovy. Now you're just trolling. Oh, man, this was great. Um, one last thing to the, to the favorite player thing. Dude, you should never stop being a LeBron James fan. That's your favorite player. Do it. Be a LeBron James fan. I, you know... No matter what anybody says about Dwayne Wade or, or Steve Nash, you know, I'm always going to be a fan. Tracy McGrady, I'm always going to be a fan. Even though, you know, there's obvious flaws there. Steve Nash never won where it counted. Tracy McGrady, he couldn't get out of the first round of the freaking playoffs. But those are still some of my favorite players ever to watch. Um... The others are obvious, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and stuff, but they're so, so accomplished that, you know, I don't get much resistance there. But you should always be a fan of your favorite player. Just because you found out he's not the greatest player of all time does not mean you shouldn't be a fan of that person. Now, what that does mean, though, is you should probably stop calling him the GOAT because that's where this, you know, the, the resistance comes from is when you call him the GOAT, then we immediately go, hell no, he's not better than Jordan. So by calling him the GOAT, you are saying that he's better than Jordan. So hopefully, Groovy, you cut that one out. Um, and hopefully from this moment on, from this video, you stop it. Um, because you'll always get resistance in that. And then that makes you contradictory. You're contradicting yourself because you've now stated openly on, on a YouTube video that Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. So keep LeBron as your favorite. Keep MJ as the GOAT. And we move on from there. All right, everybody. Let me know what you thought about this one. This probably went over an hour. I have no idea. I never know until I, I end it. Um, this was a very long one, but this was very fun to see his journey completed now. Now he knows 100% without any doubt in his mind who the greatest player of all time was. And it was Michael Jordan, not LeBron James. Shout out to Groovy if you ever watch this, man. Keep doing the grind. Keep doing your thing. Having a young man's perspective and um, on classic greats is a great thing for YouTube. So, and obviously your seven, your your thirteen point five thousand subscribers speaks to that. So there's a huge opportunity for you in this space. And it seems like you're enjoying the journey. So I say run with this one, man. Keep learning about these old dudes. You know, these players that, that you missed out on. Charles Barkley, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Kareem. You name it. Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell. Go for it, man. Um, and yeah, just shout out to you for having an open mind. And uh, having a level head. And um, man, I wish you nothing but success. Everybody, let me know what you thought about this one in the comments. Um, this was fun for me. Uh, this was a lot of fun for me. Let me know what you thought about them. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. No after dark tonight. I'm, I'm tired after this one. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna clock out after this for today. All right, you guys, but I'll see you all in the comments. Like I always do. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel. If you want more content like this, and remember to link to Groovy's video is in the description below if you want to check his channel out i'm out of breath have a wonderful day and have a wonderful rest of your night peace out everybody